Hi, everybody, and welcome back again. We're continuing Chapter 3, Notes on Vectors, and we have gotten done talking about the definition of vectors as well as uh, math operations that we can apply to vectors. We can add them, we can subtract them, we can multiply them by scalars, and so forth. In this section right here, we're going to talk about a vector and um, what we can do with it. That is, we can break a vector into x and y scalar components. Now, of course, we know that a vector has some sort of magnitude and direction of its own. We'll say right here, vector A, okay? That is, um, I don't know, three meters at some sort of angle, right? So we'll say at 20 degrees north of east, okay? So it's got a magnitude and a direction. But that direction is kind of arbitrary. At 20 degrees, that is a nice kind of round number, but it's still at some arbitrary angle that, um, that, uh, that could be any angle. What we want to do is take this vector and be able to define it in terms of two axes, an x-axis and a y-axis right here. And so what we do is we take this vector that has a magnitude and a direction, and we define it in terms of two directionless components, or that is to say scalars the x component and the y component. Now the benefit of doing this is you have you get an x component right here and you've got, I'm going to draw through the NOE, a y component right there. The benefit of that is that inherently the x-axis and the y-axis are at right angles to each other, so what you're doing is you're creating a right triangle. So if we define this vector in terms of an x component and a y component, we can use trig functions to figure out the, the properties of that vector maybe the angle that it might be at, um, or the vector itself, or the various um, components that make it up. We can uh, understand all these with trig functions. So before I go any further, down below right here, I'm going to go to a kind of a, a homemade slide that you don't have, but if you want to scribble this in the margins, you're more than welcome to. Um, this is just a little bit of a review of trig. So let's just say, once again, that this right here is our vector A, all right? And it's at 20 degrees north of east, and A equals 3.0 meters. It has an X component and a Y component. Now, they both happen to be in the positive direction. Um, this is this being positive X and that up being positive Y. But we're going to label these AX and AY right here. All right. Now let's look at the bottom triangle there for a second. What, what we've done right here, turning this vector at an angle, into uh, an x and a y component is made it into a right triangle. And so we had just kind of a run-of-the-mill right triangle right here, but that kind of represents the relationship between the vector, that is the, the full vector, and the x and the y component. All right. Of course, in the, on our black triangle down here at the bottom right here, we would call this the hypotenuse, right? That is the, what corresponds to the full vector would really be the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And um, if this is our angle theta right here, which could be anything, we wouldn't call this base. We wouldn't call it AX. We'd probably refer to it as the adjacent side, right? Because it's the side, it is a non-hypotenuse side that is adjacent to the angle. This being the angle right here, and the side is adjacent to it. And of course, what corresponds to AY over here would be the opposite side. It is the side that is opposite where the angle is. Okay, And we do have three kind of math functions, or math, um, well, we'll call them trig functions, um, that describe the relationship between the hypotenuse, the opposite, and the adjacent side. And I'm going to write them all down uh, right now kind of in different colors right here. All right, You might recall from trig, SOHCAHTOA, right? Uh, I'm going to write it down below here. S-O-H, okay, I'll do ka in green. C-A-H, and TOA I'm going to make in, say, purple, T-O-A. Well, what do they mean? Well, they're kind of just acronyms to help you remember. So, S-O-H means the sine of an angle equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay? Opposite of the hypotenuse. That means whatever this angle is right here, the sine of, oh, so whatever this angle is, the sine of that uh, represents kind of the relationship or the ratio of this side, this opposite side, to the, the, the full hypotenuse. Cosine, or, or ka, means the cosine of an angle 
equals the adjacent. You might say it's the ratio of the adjacent side, that is along the bottom right there, to the hypotenuse. So there's where your ka comes from, C-A-H. And of course, toa, you probably recall, is tangent. So tangent of an angle, and then tangent really doesn't mean anything unless it's applied to an angle. Tangent means, um, uh, the tangent of an angle is the opposite side, it's a ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. All right, so it's like saying, how does this compare to that? Whatever that decimal is, that is the tangent of this angle right here, and so it'll help us to be able to determine those, um, those angles. Well, if we kind of translate this into our, um, our vector triangle that we created right here, we can write it like so. So the sine of the angle, and again, our angle will always be based off of the horizontal, so that's the only way this works, equals the opposite. Well, in our, in our case, the opposite is AY um, divided by the hypotenuse, and in this case, the hypotenuse is the full vector A. All right. For cosine, it's adjacent over the hypotenuse. That means AX over the full vector A will be the ratio of those two sides. And tangent would be opposite over adjacent. That is a y, this one right up here, which is opposite, over the adjacent, which is ax. We're not going to deal as much with tangent, at least not initially. Um, but to get our component vectors, that is the ay and ax values, we're going to use sine and cosine. And that's what brings us back to um, well, the next slide, which we're going to go to, well, actually the previous slide, which we're going to go back to in just a second. If we want to solve for a y right here, that means we need to take this a and multiply it up next to the sine of theta. If we want to solve for this ax right here, we need to take this vector a and multiply it up by the cosine of theta. So we can say that a y is going to be the full vector a times the sine of theta, and we can say that ax down here is going to be the full vector a times a cosine of theta. That will give us equals. That will give us our kind of um, trig definitions for the two components that make up the vector, which brings us back to this right here. That's what that says. Now, that being said, I should put an arrow. This is the full vector, and that's the full vector. If you want to find the x component, take the full vector times the cosine of theta. If you want to find the y component, take the full vector times the sine of theta. All right? And this only works if theta is measured from the x-axis. Uh, we don't want to measure theta from the y-axis. That'll flip everything around and get us all confused. As long as your, your theta is measured from the x-axis, you can say, all right, the x component is the magnitude times the cosine of theta. The y component is the magnitude of the vector times the sine of theta. By the way, these may have signs as well. Your AX may be a positive or a negative, or, or your Y uh, could be a positive or a negative. They depend on what quadrant the vector is in, but as long as you know what direction that vector is pointing, um, you can apply signs uh, to those AX or AY values. And we'll practice doing that a little, little bit later. All right, let's do, a, uh, let's do an example right here. Um, it's going to be example 3, 2. Now, right away, I don't like this because... Um, the notation is kind of funny. This is called D right here, and this is called B and H. I get what they're doing. B is for base, H is for height right here. But let's turn this into a vector triangle. We're going to call this vector uh, from the guy on the ground all, all the way to the top of the cliff. We'll call that, uh, we'll humor them. We'll call it vector D. We can really call it anything. All right, we're going to call it vector D. And uh, which means this base right here is going to be DX. And this height right here is going to be dy. So what's going on right here? Well, we have this guy who is uh, lying on the ground, and he has either a protractor or a sextant or some sort of a thing that measures angles. And uh, he does measure an angle from the ground of 34 degrees. All right, and he measures from the ground to the very tip top of this, uh, this cliff right here. He doesn't know the height of the cliff which is what it's being asked in part B right here. He also doesn't know the, the linear distance, the straight line distance from himself to the top of the cliff. That would be kind of the hypotenuse or the full displacement vector. But what he does know is that he's 500 feet from the base of the cliff, which is right here. 
5.0 times 10 to the 2, of course, is 500 feet. So um, what I should probably do is um, I'm going to rewrite this real quickly on another slide. So we have this. All right. So um, that's going to be, that's nah, not too bad. Um, that's going to be our vector triangle. All right. So here's our distance x, which we know is 500 feet. And um, dy, we don't know. And we don't know d the vector itself. But we do know that this angle right here between the ground and the top of the cliff is 34 degrees. That's our angle theta. All right, so what is being asked of us is this. And can I move all this around? You know, I'm going to do this. Heck with it. That'll give us some more space. All right, what we want to know is a couple of things. What is the straight line distance from the base of the cliff? And if we go back to look at the base of the cliff from here to here. Well, that's our d. That's our vector d. Now, that's a little scratch out right there. That should just be just vector d. All right. Uh, that's what we want to find for, for part a. So let's go ahead and do that. Vector d equals question mark. That's what we're solving for. Well, anything we're solving for, we want to know what do we currently know. We do know that the dx, the x component, equals 500 feet. And we know that theta equals 34 degrees. We should be able to solve for the full distance d from the guy on the ground to the top of the cliff. Why? Because that's the hypotenuse, right? And what we have is we have a value that is the adjacent side to that angle. So what sine or what trig function um, deals with the adjacent and the hypotenuse? It'll be cosine. The cosine of an angle. And I always write it out in so katoa form first. So this is the ka is adjacent of the hypotenuse. All right, well, that means that it's dx over the vector d. So for solving just for d, we're going to multiply the d up over to this side, and then we're going to divide down by the cosine of theta. So basically, d and cosine of theta are going to switch places. So our working equation is going to be d, the vector d, that is this whole thing right here, is going to be dx it looks like a y, doesn't it? dx divided by the cosine of theta. Okay, that's going to give us 500 feet divided by the cosine of 34 degrees. Um, and that'll give us what? If we key in our values right here, that should give us the, the vector d is going to be about 603 feet from where the guy is lying on the ground to the, 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 the top of the cliff. And that makes sense because if one of our bases right here is 500 feet, it should make sense that our hypotenuse is longer. Okay, so that's how we solve for the hypotenuse. We know the, the, rela the relationship between the hypotenuse and the adjacent and the angle. We just simply just need to plug in our values and, um, and solve for it. Let's find part B now. I'm going to write uh, B down here at the bottom, bottom left. Okay. B, we're being asked to find what? Well, let's go back a second. Uh, the height of the cliff. Height of the cliff. Well, that's going to be our dy, right? Our, our y component of that, of that displacement vector d right there. dy is what we're solving for, so let's write it down. dy equals question mark. Now, what we could do is say, all right, well, we know the hypotenuse, so maybe we can use that in our calculation. But as always, I say, just try to steer, steer clear of that. Try to use what you, you absolutely do know, because it's very possible maybe you, you got this wrong. All right. Some questions you have to use previous answers, but in this one we can go without. So I'm not going to use the hypotenuse value that we just found. I am going to use the fact that we know dx, the x component, equals 500 feet. And our angle is going to be 34 degrees. We do know that. All right. So we're looking for the relationship between the x component and the y component right here. Like we're solving for the y. Well, what trig function does that involve? The y function is the opposite. The x function is the adjacent. And so we, uh, if we look back at our trig functions, we can say, oh, tangent. Tangent will work because tangent of an angle equals opposite over adjacent. All right. So in this case, the opposite is going to be dy. The adjacent is going to be dx. Okay, so we can sort of cut this 
That's just kind of like for a reminder right there. We can cut that out of the middle. We can say, all right, well, the tangent of theta is dy over dx. We're solving just for dy, so let's just take our dx and multiply it up next to the tangent over here. So that means dx times the tangent of theta is going to be equal to dy. That is the y component of that vector d. All right, I'm going to turn this around here. So dy equals, what is dx? Well, we know that's 500 feet, right? And times the tangent of theta, what is theta? It's 34 degrees. So that'll give us what? This one I don't have memorized. I'll have to redo it. 500, 10, 34. 337 feet. 337 feet, roughly from uh, the base to the top of the cliff right there. And that is your y component of that vector, d y. It's not an actual vector, it's a scalar, but it's a scalar component of the vector that, that when put together with the other scalar, dx, uh, creates a component um, d, which is the straight line distance from the man to the cliff. All right, so that's kind of a practical application of our sine functions um, and finding the components uh, and the various sides of, um, of a vector triangle. All right, I think that's enough for now. We've spent about 15 minutes at this. Um, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up uh, taking, a, um, taking the components of a vector and putting them together and reassembling the vector from the components. So we've taken the vector and broken it down to the components, and now we're going to do the opposite in the next video segment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.